Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, February 25th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. <laughs> that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast of indeterminate length, episode 731. And I don't have a clip of Back to the Future or something, because that's kind of... <laughs> uh if you uh haven't heard the post show you might become a patron uh but we were there's a reason for hashtag old bear problems mm. <laughs> which sort of ties into today's topic Gary. yes jeff why, why am I speaking Amazing. of Back to the Future and hashtag old bear prop? Well, because today's episode uh, is just called Bears in the Future. Um, to you by the leather, by the letter old, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, no, so um, I didn't realize this. It occurred to me recently that we have crossed a threshold, but... Um, I don't know if anyone's really kind of talked about it because it's not well known, like the origin of the term bear mm. and the bear community as a concept. And mm. so, like, I even went online and I'll, um, I'll add, hang on, let me take it off there because I think it's this. Yeah, I'll put this in. So we have a, a wiki article sort of as a reference if people are interested. Um, so... The interesting thing to me that I was thinking about this recently, like, you know, how long have I been in the community and like, blah, blah, blah. And what occurred to me is that the, the lore, if you will, is that it was in the mid eighties, um, mm. on the West coast that the concept of the term bear came around. Um, and that there's some different timeline points about when the word bear was put into print. Um, there's a reference to uh, Les K. Wright wrote an article in Drummer Magazine, um, and that, uh, which was edited by Jack Frischer. Frischer was the founding editor of San Francisco's California Action Guide back in 1982, and this was uh, the, he was the first editor to publish the word "bear" quote unquote with the gay culture meeting on a magazine cover, which was November of '82. Mm. Um. And the other thing, though, is that there was an article in The Advocate back in 1979 called Who's in Who's Who in the Zoo um, by George Mazai. I think that's how it's pronounced. And they um, are quoted as saying this particular article characterized gay men as several types, seven different types of animals, including bears. So the concept has been around for quite some time. And I didn't realize that we crossed a threshold theoretically or we are at, a, at an anniversary milestone. Mm. Depending on how you want to look at it, you could say like anywhere within the past couple of years is the 40th anniversary. Mm. But like like I said, we don't really celebrate that. It's not like Stonewall or um, Compton's Table riots. You know what I mean? It's not like something right, right, that right. has like a definitive like journalistic thing that we can say definitively like this was the beginning of that. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhere in about the eighties. The first Mr. International bear was held in 1992. 
So that's just over 30 years ago. So it kind of makes sense that it took a while. And I know that like I learned of bears during the 90s um, during my college years and ended up like joining a bear club in like 99 and um, that kind of stuff. So what occurred to me then is like if we've crossed this threshold, what what's to come? Like if if we're recognizing that there's been roughly, you know, 40 years for some 30 years you know, to get to where we are in this journey, what does that mean for the future? Um, mm. So if we double the time and think of this as like a midpoint and we're like, okay, let's look another 30 to 40 years down the road. So then we would be looking at like 2050 something or 2060 something. Hmm. Um, like one of the things I'm curious about is like, will runs still exist? And I asked that question legitimately because there's not as many as there used to be. Right. Um, the pandemic had a huge impact on that. Yeah. And so there's some, but not as many as there used to be. Um, I admittedly led Drench Fur for, you know, 15 years. There was going to be a 16th year. However, because of the timing of our event, it was right when COVID happened. <laughs> in March of 2020. And so we ended up canceling the event and we haven't brought it back yet. And not because, um, there isn't necessarily interest or desire, but, um, as the key person that organized it, I'm very busy and I don't necessarily yeah. have a lot of bandwidth and, mm -hmm. um, the world has changed. Uh, our host hotel is gone, <laughs> like sure. been closed is being demolished. Um, mm. and it was kind of like the ideal spot in, in the city. Um, for us to hold that kind of event. So, it, you know, if we do bring something of it back, it'll be different. Um, yeah. So there's been there's been that as an effect as well. Um, you know, and people change, their lives change, things go on. Um, I've reached out to some folks in St. Louis because hibernation has sort of been there. Um, but JJ's closed. Um, mm. And that was their big venue that put on their event. And so the changing of the landscape, I think, has a a, a big impact. So if we're thinking about the concept of like people getting together and gathering, um, you know, like I have some friends that were just talking to me about uh, Midwest Bear Fest in December and that they went. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were kind of just kind of comparing notes. They've been to DF a number of times. Um, but what I got me thinking about it is like. In the decades to come, will these will these events even exist anymore? Will we think that there's a reason to have these events yeah. or not? It's rather interesting, I will say, as someone who just came from um, mm -hmm. an event, uh, a big event, a large event that is gaining popularity, you know, over the years. It has. It's continued to grow. Um, I'm talking about North American Bear, NAB. Um, we hit over 1,400 people this year at wow. NAB, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. We're not on the heels of TV. We're closer on the heels of TBRU, which is usually 2000. So I think there's a, for lack of a better phrase, con consolidation factor that is going into play. Mm. Like there are fewer events, but they're larger. Um, like I think IBC is going on right now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, NAB, World Bear. World Bear is still kind of, I would say, small. Um, in a sense, but it hasn't been going for as long. Right. I think it's about to hit its chin. No, it's still not ten. Um, but you know, it's there. There, I think the events are not going away, but they're becoming larger and not as many. So there's fewer local regional events and more fewer local events fewer regional events and we're going into larger like international events like um, i think this weekend was also bears on ice uh, which is up in pennsylvania which there there were issues with their hotel um if you haven't heard there was some flooding um oh. that happened this year this time like pipes first two floors were essentially affected so people had to be i don't know what happened but i've only heard literally this morning wow. that, that happened so it's interesting um as you've said gary a lot of stuff has changed 
particularly because of the pandemic. And one of those are a perfect example of that is just like businesses closing. Um, Mm -hmm. I was the, I think it was during NAB, I was having a conversation with someone about like events and such. And I was realizing our bars, just going out to a bar, like there are fewer bear bars. Like Cincinnati never had one. Um, we had a leather bar, but that's now gone. And um, so there's not a location for us to gather anymore. Um, right. We had a bear organization um, that has shut down um, completely. And that was either just before or during the pandemic. I feel like it was during the pandemic that it decided to shut down. But it had been, to be fair, it had been dwindling for years. They literally were doing just a monthly potluck in so- someone's house. That was the main course of their events. Right. They weren't going out doing much. They weren't, you know, in the community doing much of anything. They were just like gathering, and um, that was the extent. So, it's the closest bear bars for us for a time were up in Columbus. Well, I'm pretty sure those have all closed. Um, and organizations up there seem to be not as active. Um, so it becomes a, I think like one of the things we've been talking about is aging and people aging out. And I think that's kind of what it is. Like those who were very committed to holding on to having these events and having these um, organizations and such, I think have, aged out Mm. they've grown older they no longer have the time or the energy or the effort to do it and the younger generation it's just so weird saying it um but the younger generation in a sense we've they've become more inclusive in a sense so it's all about like everyone can come and everyone can be at the table so Mm -hmm. there's no need for this quote-unquote division um, so everyone's welcome to be at a, at an event. Everyone's welcome to be at a space. So don't worry about it. NAB was quite insightful, um, in that, to my knowledge, and, uh, you know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time at everything, but, um, NAB has become quite, um, inclusive of all peoples so that has been rather interesting to me to see and hear that all people are coming to spaces but my future prediction has been um bear there will be fewer bear events but they will be larger these will be like the family reunions as it were these will Mm. be like the um, we don't see each other except this one time a year because we're all going to be at this event. So we're making a weekend of it. It's going to be on the calendar every year. Everyone's going to come, and these events are just going to get larger and larger and larger. But there will be fewer of them. It's interesting that you say that. A um, couple of things. For folks that aren't aware of some of the acronyms that we were using, so IBC is International Bear Convergence. Uh, TBR is Texas Bear Roundup. So we have a we have a tendency in our community to abbreviate our <laughs> event <laughs> weekends. Um, like Midwest Bear Fest is usually referred to as um, MWBF. Mm-hmm. We don't say that out loud. That one's interesting, but we tend to abbreviate it that way. Um, like Drench Fur became DF. So yeah, like um, no, I haven't heard about the thing that happened with Bears on Ice, and that's actually pretty awful. Um, having been an event organizer, I don't know how I'd feel about like that happening during my event. Um, <laughs> But no, I mean, you bring up an interesting point about like the aging thing um, mm-hmm. as a sidebar. So last fall, uh, the Berg Bears ended officially as the organization mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. Um, the A former president made a post and tagged me in it along with a bunch of folks that had been like leaders in the organization or the founders, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, which to be fair, a lot of us could be considered old timers um, in consideration. And one of the interesting things was that the organization followed the bylaws that we created decades ago that said, like, if there wasn't enough officers to hold the positions of the board, then the organization must be dissolved. 
Mm. And it's assets like, you know, distributed, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know that that was a thing. And I think a lot of us who had sort of like grown distant and disengaged from the organization were not aware that they were like in a new phase where no, there was no real leadership. Like there weren't people Mm. willing to hold positions or do things. So um, there was a lot of, I think, hand wringing and some people I think were understandably emotional about it and uh, uh, bothered by the fact that like it went away and like, you know, it seemed like because they have a lack of knowledge, I think some opinions were like how you know what were they doing and why didn't they reach out and ask us for help and blah 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 and part of me was like well were you even going to meetings like were you participating were you doing anything um and it's a it's a fair set of questions to ask because you know it's interesting you're talking about how like there will be less local ones and more like less runs overall in general but like those that exist will be bigger Mm -hmm. um due to the like absorption of the, of the regional local attendance yeah. issue. And I find that interesting because I think there's also something else to be said for like the aging of our community because our community, as it gets older, like finds itself in a different place in life. And mm-hmm. so I think about some of my friends who had been going, but like their big thing now is to go to, to P town to Provincetown, Massachusetts for bear week. Mm. Like that's their annual vacation that they do, and that is not a a, a small penny in the no, pocket. It's not, um, you know. And so, like things like you know, going to beef dip for um, mm. Puerto Vallarta, like you know these 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 destination yeah. vacation slash run events, I think are like part of that trend as well because you've you've grown older. You're in your thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, maybe, mm-hmm. and like you have income. Like if you Especially if you have not followed the model of quote unquote nuclear family, you don't have kids, you don't have pets. If it's just you or you and your spouse, like you have more disposable income. So you probably have a home and you have that ability to travel and to do those things. Yeah. And that's one of the things I know in the years we were putting on the run in the past, we talked about, like we tried to be available to everyone, not just like, you know, white collar gays, no offense, but also like blue collar individuals. So for some people that like, you know, worked a fast food job and didn't make very much money, this was the one thing they were able to do each year. Uh Um, So that's why I kind of wanted things to be cost effective. Um, You were talking about how businesses have changed. I just read an article uh, recently about how one of our school districts is struggling for bus drivers. And the reason I mention that is because we contracted with them for years as our um, transportation for our day tours and to go to the water park at night. Um, and I know that some people kind of didn't care for the school buses, but it's like, listen, baby, like this is the cost effective thing. If you want to pay mm-hmm. five times as much, we I can get you the luxury liner with the cushy seats and the bathroom yeah. on board that one of you will probably decimate and everyone will be pissed because <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> like, you know, like like everything has a cost to it. Yeah. So agreed, and I think that's part of it too. Mm-hmm. Like, no offense. Like, again, I hate blaming the, a lot on the pandemic, but the pandemic has caused a lot of people to shift focus on what is important to them and what they are willing to pay for, um, for the good and the bad, as it were. Um, in the good part part of it, as you've kind of said, instead of like going to every run around you for, um, you know, spending a little bit here and there and doing the runs and doing the hotels and like going to that place. Maybe you do spl- instead splurge on a bigger one, P town beef dip, the bigger ones. Um, and that's sort of your big vacation slash bear event that you go to, to can reconnect with people or find new people or, um, hell, you know, make content, get lucky, huh? Make but, content. That part too, because uh, that's a new trend. Oh, new word trend. That in a say. second. Anyway, that being said, um, <laughs> I, I, that's that's we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, it it does make sense to me that that's the focus now. You know, and that's mm. what I think will be a change in the future. Is that um maybe you'll choose one event or maybe two. And those will be your like destination slash um, reunions. Um, with well, I mean, that's what Drew and I did. We hadn't been to a bear run in a couple of years because of the pandemic. We went to World Bear Weekend in Orlando. 
<laughs> part of the draw of going there was that he used to live there mm-hmm. and like so he got to see some old friends, you know, that he used to hang out with when he lived there. And um we got to go to the parks. Yeah. Orlando is a tourist destination city. So we actually went and, you know, did some of the big parks while we were there. So that was the vacation. Like we extended the weekend and made it over a week and like dropped coin for the travel, for the Mm -hmm. multiple hotels and the meals and the parks and all that stuff. And then I got COVID. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) so uh, that was was sort of the idea. Like, you didn't go, you didn't have the events near you. You didn't have the events, the smaller events to go to. So you're like, we're going to make this one f- bigger and better, as it were. Right. And not just the event itself, but we're going to spend time around it. And I've heard that's what's been happening with several people. When they go to NAB, some have been extending their weekends to like leave, come in on Wednesday. Um, the event itself this time did something Wednesday night. Um, it wasn't, um, it was listed and it was at the hotel. Um, but it was, it was just sort of like a drag show, um, drag event. Mm-hmm. And some, I think the thing that they've normally done on other nights, um, during NAB, they put on Wednesday, um, like it's a, you know, bearded drag, essentially. It was sort of like that dirt. They used to have like right. a skag drag or whatever show um where um some of the performers were people that were coming to the event that kind of thing and it was fun it's always been a fun moment and people had laugh and all that um but they moved it to wednesday night and it looked pretty well attended from what i see i wasn't there um but again people are starting to come in wednesday during the day as opposed to waiting until thursday um to come to the event so yeah So uh, I just want to recognize that um, in the live chat, (laughs) Lloyd said, boy, can't wait to go to a bear event where the average age is 50. Wait. (laughs) I mean, if that's your thing, Lloyd, like. Right, right. And then he said, said, side note, I can now tell when a bear event is happening by the Twitter port alone. This is true. It's it's facts. Hundred, hundred. It's facts. Oh. Lloyd telling tea, sipping some tea, pouring some tea up in this bitch. <laughs> um, well, and here, here's the, I've been sitting here thinking, so I'm going to say something. Uh, here's something it, I, I predict. I predict that bear events will definitely fade because our millennial zil, Zoomer uh, brethren, I could take the time to run these things. Well, I was thinking about that, right? Because we were recently talking about generations and the delineation and the labels and all that jazz, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the interesting thing I find about that is like there is some cultural differences. Like the youth, I was reading an article recently about how like the youth are living at home in their parents' basements because they can't afford to buy a house. Um, you know, or move out on their own. And also some of them maybe don't necessarily have as much interest in socializing or doing things and being out like, you know, and about. Mm -hmm. And I think those are also factors. Um, All of this, you know, conversation about like there being less of them and them being bigger um, comes back to something that someone said to me years ago. And I found it a really interesting point that they made. And we kind of Discussed it. I don't know if I really debated with them a whole lot. I might have a little bit. Um, But they said their prediction for bear events in the future is that they will all become corporations. Mm. And I found that to be like a little off putting, I think, just hearing it. But the logic behind it is sound. And by that, I mean, they're all going to become LLCs or nonprofits. So they're Mm going to be nonprofit corporations or limited liability corporations. And by that, I mean, like the concept is, is essentially, this is very rudimentary, um, either for profit or nonprofit is kind of the the way to put it. But you create a legal entity and it, it buys you some things that also protects because Mm -hmm. like, if you don't have that establishment and something goes wrong, whether predicted or unpredicted, like, you know, like 
damage at a facility, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, or like mass people falling ill because of, you know, an outbreak of something like we we are in an age where some people might, you know, want to be litigious and take people to court. And so you need legal protections for stuff. Um, right. It's it's a downside. It's not necessarily a warm, fuzzy feeling to think about, like, going to an event and then, you know, having people want to take umbrage with, you know, stuff when you're just trying to do something to get people together to have fun. Um, I was just talking with somebody recently. Uh, we were talking <laughs> at a dinner about how we used to go um, to another city for these quote unquote pool parties. But the pool mm. parties were like in a spa kind of like YMCA type function event that they were able to buy out for the evening, mm. which was nice. So it was kind of like an impromptu bathhouse ish. Um, but the thing is, like there there was supposed to be no hanky panky, like no sex. And it's like. Okay, you can say that. But... <laughs> right. So I'm pretty sure some people got some handsies like in, you know, showers or bathroom stalls or something, but you know, things of that nature. That being said, um yeah, like so I, I reflect on that when they said, you know, about how they're all gonna become corporations, and I was like and I took it as like they meant like it's gonna be like um you know, like, uh, bare butthole sponsored by, you know, <laughs> like, you know, leather daddy lube or something. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I, like I took it very much as like a commodification of the community mm. and that it was going to be nothing but businesses that we're putting on events. And now like pretty soon within the conversation, maybe I think I like shifted my mindset or over the years I've, I've leaned more towards what I said originally is that like they are making themselves into legal entities and part of it is like a protection like yeah aspect but also like it gives you the ability to like you know have your own bank account and avoid like mm. weirdness with funding you know and yeah. and the thing is i will say this i think if if the event is well done well attended and like complaints or like issues are minimal people don't care they they don't ask questions about the minutia right. Like yeah. who's in charge and what pennies are being spent on this and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if things go sideways, then they start asking those questions. You know, mm-hmm. there's been issues over the years, you know, within our own communities, people have done stuff and then people start asking like, hey, whatever happened to that? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, did that charity actually get the funding or this or that? And, yeah. You know, and it is unfortunate because um, I don't think – I, I'm, and this, is, this will be on my grave. I'm an eternal optimist. I really do believe the better in people and that, you know, they, they do what they can as in the moment. Um, maybe it doesn't necessarily comprehensively like, make sense, the decisions that they make. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's interesting that we will have events, what they will look like and, uh, how they will be there. I don't know. I, yeah. I've, find it interesting you know damon that you're like you related the event to like a family reunion yeah Um, i think that's that's just something very something that i've seen a lot of times is at least for me these the events are the only times i see certain people right whether it's because they live you know in another state or they live across the country um but it's usually the only time i see certain people like maybe once or twice a year um, and that's what I mean by like the family reunion aspect. These are people that I am looking forward to seeing and I'm happy to see, um, and getting that opportunity to see them. Um, and I feel that's the case sometimes, um, for ill and nil, you know, in regards to events, um, as someone who used to attend, um, Midwest Bear Fest, um, main reasons were like seeing people like Gary and and a few other friends of mine that went to those events regularly. Right. Um, the event itself wasn't always interesting or attractive to me anymore because it had become very redundant in what it was doing. So I haven't been in a few years. Um, I will say with the new changes with the hotel and stuff, I might consider attending in the future. Um, But also, I'm also not seeing that a lot is changing. It's just a new hotel, which is kind of a yay-ish moment. Like going, going to a new hotel, but doing a lot of the same thing doesn't really entice me to want to go to your event. 
um, changing things up, having things that are interesting and in, I can invest my time in when I'm spending to go to it are what will make me more interested in going to your event. Right. Um, and don't get me wrong, like some events are very guilty of stuff like that. Um, and for many people, that's okay. As Gary was kind of saying, a lot of people will gloss over things because um, they're still having a good time or they don't ask the questions about what's going on because there's nothing really bad happening. It's just a lot of the same things. Um, well, I think there's there's comfort in the regularity. Right. Agreed. Eat your fiber, kids. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> But but I, honestly, it's like, oh, like, you know, that like, you know, pre-event is on Thursday and when it kicks off on Friday and the, this thing happens on Friday mm -hmm. evening, you know, Friday night, you know, Saturday, there are these things during the day. Right. We do this like bigger function towards the evening. The big hubaloo is Saturday night. But like, like as yeah. long as like the bones of the structure of the event kind of stay the same, I think people find comfort in that because they they know that there's a reliability about what's going to happen where when and then yeah. the more often you go to said event you can kind of flex it and be like eh, yeah. i'm not really interested in this thing so like yeah. you know i'm gonna you know plan a um a magic the gathering game in in my room i'm exactly. gonna get a suite or something you yeah. know like like for example and this is a perfect example um three or four people i kind of went with none of them were interested in the contest at mm -hmm. nab like, which is, NAB is kind of known for having the contest. So North American right. Bear, Mama Bear, et cetera. Um, that's the, I don't want to say that's the main focus of the event, but it's a higher focus of the event. So main focus is probably a better way to put it. Right. So if you're not interested in the contest, you're, you're not going to a lot of the things that are happening during NAB because they're contest focused. Right. So... Um, what do you do? Well, one of our friends, um, intentionally like got involved to create things that were being done during the time that the contest was being run. So specifically talked to the producers, mm -hmm. um, and was like, to be kind of, I'm being blunt when I say this, like, I don't want to go to the contest. So let me host something. So that those who also don't win a contest, because I know I'm not the only one, will have something that they want to do that is part of the event <laughs> itself. Right. And I mean, I don't know. I, I'm going to I actually will see him tomorrow, I hope. And I just want to pick his brain about like, well, how did they go? Like, did you have a, right. did you have attendees? Did you have like people showing up? Um, did you have fun? That's the big part, too. Because, right. um, you know, if, if it was like three people doing random shit like that's that's not really great but i don't uh, know i've seen a couple of videos online that look like a lot of fun between three people but well <laughs> <laughs> okay so, since you so, brought it up well, no, before, hold, please hold that thought i want to go okay. back to what you're saying so i find it interesting that they approach the the you know the sponsors creators whatever developers oh. coordinators and say hey like i'm not interested in this thing that you're doing but i'm willing to do something else that happened with me people were like hey like i have an idea about something um, some people did kind of like give us, you know, feedback over the years and we're like, we don't like going to the water park. We want to have something else as an option. <laughs> and we as a board slash committee were like, OK, but we're not doing anything else. Like it's it's called drenched fur. Like the whole point is going to the water park. The logo is a polar bear going down a water slide like right. like. We, we drew a line in the sand and we're like, effectively, this is the whole reason for the event. It's why mm -hmm. it started. It was a daytime event thing where we went with the public. Like it, it manifested and turned into this like thing. And we were like, we're not putting more energy and time into something else. If you want to do something else, have at it. The hotel is still open and available. Like, you know, it'll sort of not have many people in it. And mm -hmm. the reason I bring this up is I see it as sort of a, a, tug of war a little bit and at the same time if said alternate contest event thing is good and becomes popular it could be conflictive for the event because the idea is to have the contest and right. you know if say 1400 people come to the event and 
half of them want to like go do other things, it starts in my mind as the event organizer, like I bring to the table and say, why are we doing this thing? Like, what is the, I did that with my very own event. We had a bar night and the last year that we had it, I said to the board and the committee, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, it's not worth it. We're spending money. You know, we're putting an effort to have to take people to the local bar and they're not interested in it. And the bar doesn't seem interested in us. I, I think we just, you know, nip this in the bud and say to heck with it. Yeah. Um, and we did end up stopping it. And I know that for years people were like, oh, I wish we had like a bar event, blah, blah, blah. And most of those people understandably are not from here. And right. like they're coming right, in from right. out of town and they want to go to a place. And then, you know, um, yeah. so like the, I think that shows like the, the flexitor or fluidity of like event planning. Mm -hmm. So to your point, yes, there was uh, – content being created um that has been posting and or coming soon to your yeah. jff or of or whatever feeds no pun intended. and i think that's no pun intended i don't know huh. you, I mean, he said coming. oh said coming. no yeah no that was not intended but uh, that's a that's a that's an expected outcome and i do think that that was something Again, no that intended. might be <laughs> <laughs> And I do but think they're that setting it up. I have to take it. It's I don't like I'm just putting it right there and you have no choice but to deal with it, you know? It's playing it out there for all to see. Um, <laughs> Anyways. Um. <laughs> but yeah, it, it that was something I've seen a an increase in is people creating content for their for their sites. Right. Um, do I we, think we that's something that old convention? Well, and it's funny you mentioned that, Jeff. That is something that people are starting to generate. Maybe not um, conventions where, but right. there are people making, um, for lack of a better phrase, oh, this is going to sound terrible, content farms, um, where the whole purpose is to someone like rents a, a, a cabin or... Um, gets a couple of hotel rooms or what have you. And the whole purpose of it is for content creators to come together and make content. Right. You know, maybe it's for a day, maybe it's for a weekend, but the whole idea is that um, it's a way for you to put some money down, go to an event or go to this thing and make content for your sites. And right. everyone there is signing waivers and, doing all the things that need to be done, that's all being put out there, and then you just make the content, and then you just you can put it wherever you want to or other people. Um, making content has become a part of this now, unofficially, I will say, um, for bear events. Um, yeah, were... I was, I was going to say, like, I think for the community, this is a newer development, but not necessarily surprising. And yeah. I think it's the advent of technology that brings that, because I'm just mm -hmm. going to say this, you know, uh, the, the Wikipedia, the Wikipedia, wow, though, that's for LPAK, um, <laughs> the Wikipedia <laughs> um, content makes reference to um yeah, it says in the 1980s, gay men in the San Francisco Bay Area who called themselves bears met informally at Bear Hug, and then in parentheses it writes sex parties <laughs> uh, via the newly emerging internet. So, like, even there in, in our in our lore, our history as a community, they're basically saying you get a bunch of men together, they're gonna fuck. Like, <laughs> like that's that's just the reality of it, you know. Um, so, I to your point though, I don't think anyone's like created fuck a palooza like yeah. as an actual thing but at the same time you can't be an event coordinator especially when a when a, a overnight facility is involved like like a hotel mm -hmm. if you don't think people are getting their freak on that's a different thing and then the advent of technology is like oh hey I have a little mini computer in my hands that could record things I could make video content like so mm -hmm. you know let's let's Zoom in on that action, yeah. And so then, are you going yes. to the Barry fans uh, uh, event in, <laughs> in Las Vegas? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could, see, you could. Here's the thing: is yeah. this is an idea, idea. Uh, 
when, it, when I'm, I'm saying that partially as a joke. And I say partially because I think this is a great idea. Is to have a a bear event, which is more of like a business convention. <laughs> where you have a convention at a hotel or something mm -hmm. like that. You have rooms. You have panels mm -hmm. discussing uh, various aspects of uh, maybe uh, productions or something like that. Mm. And it gets an opportunity for various content creators to create content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's doable. It not doable. I think it's a great idea. And you I have think a I've, panel I've... for like the mm -hmm. major uh, porn studios, some of the independents, uh, maybe have like uh uh, creator alley where people can go and uh, uh, talk to their favorite content creators. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe like, make arrangements. Yeah. I mean, what you're talking about, Jeff is basically like comic con, right? Right. Like, like a comic convention, a furry convention, a star Trek convention, like a star Wars guy. Like these are all kind of like niche conventions quote unquote but they are all like in a way what you're describing like it is the ability for the people to come together to co-mingle um for people to you know who are you know uh put on pedestals i guess or looked upon or you know fanned over to be seen and i i think that like you're right like there is some legitimacy to this concept i know that this has happened um there's been several uh conventions quote unquote for the adult film industry um where there are content creators, like there are booths, there are, you know, there's a vendor floor, um, all that kind of stuff. Right. I don't know if it's come to the. Can we, can we have I, an I, event my... that's a, a bear event that's not uh, surrounded by pageantry? I mean, I think some so... of those exist. I mean, years ago when I was, you know, helping lead the Berg Bears. We had Woof, which was Weekend of Outrageous Fun. We did that in Pittsburgh for a number of years. And it was an anti-run event on purpose. Like, like we actually did a, a stupid contest for a non-existing -ex title a couple of years where, like, they had to, like, you know, um, balance Kansas spaghettio on their belly, I think, or, I mean, like we did, we did stupid shit and it, and I, when I came into helping with that, cause it sort of existed before me, um, it was intentionally to make fun of the pageantry, the concept of like, you know, this is the one we put above all. Um, mm. and I don't know if that's really quite the case with contests anymore, but there was a period of time within our community for a good, like, I want to say 20 years where it was like, we would sash or vest or whatever, the one that like we thought was the bear quote unquote. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've, you know, adapted and had more titles that have expanded things and the ability for folks to come into that. But I mean, I was well aware at the time that we were creating this culture of like, who's the most fuckable. That's really what it came down to. It's like, who does everybody in the room want to share DNA with? <laughs> they win. Like, and that's not a good way to necessarily do that because <laughs> you know, that's really, kind of limiting um the opportunity and i think contests have you know been pivoting a little bit more into what is it that you can do for the community what will right. you bring to the community as opposed to just like you're a hot ass or a hot dick or whatever yeah. you know and i think I, that's sort of been the case now go ahead Jeff. yeah I, I think the one thing that for events that i did go to a long time ago because I eventually got bored. I, I feel like the events need... Uh, one thing that can help with events is to... Focus on... The social aspect. Like, hey, this is an event a bunch of people come to be social. And maybe have, like, some... Sort, sort of a, a bear podcasting convention. There are some people who are bears that podcast that don't do a bear podcast like us or something mm. like that. You know, 
that sort of thing and maybe have some some crossovers between things that sort of thing so uh but then just kind of make things a little more broad and just activities to be social versus like the pageantry the the, the vendor markets kind of end up in, being in things but those really i think are sh should be for the bigger events because that's going to be the most profitable and and that right. that might bring in more people be more of dealing with the social aspect than pageantry because like you said like hey uh i don't I want to go to the event, but I don't want to go to the contest. contest. Right. Right. And I think that's, mm -hmm. and I think that's been what has slowly happened for some events. Like mm -hmm. NAB is the mo for me, the example that kind mm -hmm. of does a good com com combining of both in a sense, um, in a sense, I will say, um, there are classes sounds like like they do that they, yeah they and provide a venue is... to be social with the, the right you know, water park. exactly Drake tidal fur was is... like that yeah there were con there were where the contest isn't the focus and i agree i think like that's fine i don't think beef dip for example which is a i think would be a larger scale event um has a contest i don't think maybe i don't know it doesn't matter i as what i've heard of it it doesn't i don't recall a contest being the focus of it so if there is a contest right. It's not the focus. Well, that being like said, the, the exposure events, right? You know, Western exposure, you assume exposure, etc. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are more social, I would say. Mm -hmm. I think so that's those... not the S word. That's not, I was going to say, David. <laughs> that's not the S word. I thought you were going to say. But but I will I would... say that that having the big the big events, like honestly, just having like three or four during a year you know maybe like one a quarter or something so we got tbru still going hmm. um i mean we now have world bear weekend nab sounds like it's still going midwest bear fest hmm. we used to have bear pride bear week in province sound Right. Eventually, I think it's going to like narrow down. The bear runs are going to narrow down on the big ones, and just have these kind of mini events. I'm curious about like the future with the mini event thing because one of the things that got said about and feedback to my event, so the positive side was, people appreciated coming to it and they highly recommended it as a first time event because it was smaller scale. And you had much more ability to get to know people. One of the chief things that people say when they go to a bigger event is that they just feel like lost in an ocean and they don't really make connections. And so unless you go with people, you know, and hang with those people, you really don't feel yeah. like a part of it, which is challenging and difficult. Like if NAB reached 1400, which the 1400 if I understand how they're still doing their numbers, and I realize it's going to sound like a criticism, it slightly is, that's the total count for the weekend. That's not the people necessarily that registered. So that's people who did day passes, night passes, and like those kind of things. Um, so, you know, if you're staying at the host hotel and it holds like five, 600 people, um, that's a lot of faces in a crowd yeah. uh, to kind of intermingle and do things with. So I'm, I'm curious to see if like smaller events will be successful or do okay because some people just don't deal well with like large mm -hmm. crowds. I know several people have said to me, they're like, I don't care for being at a big event because it's overwhelming. It's too stimulating. There's too many people. Like it's just, yeah. you know, I'm not a crowds person, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that I feel has, can happen. I know that there were people during NAB, which as I said, a larger event that literally I, ha I saw one that said I never left my room for, again, there were other reasons, but um, like he very rarely left his room, not because he was overwhelmed or anything, but like that was his comfort zone. He was fine. Like maybe I'll go down and grab something to eat and then come back and spend time in my room. You know, maybe 
enjoying the company of a few people here or there, but it was in their comfort level. Right, right. Um, there were people I saw, I could know where to find them because they were almost always going to be in the lobby. Mm, yeah. Because it was an expansive, it was an expansive lobby. It's got some areas where people could sit now. Um, where they, where could could everyone sit in these lobbies now? But you know, um, it was essentially places where people could just like relax and not be engaging with the event, but still be engaged. If that makes sense. No, it does. And one of the things I think about is like even I like changed over time and transitioned because, like in the earlier years, there were stories of like someone came to our event and like put a posting on. I don't know if it was social media an app or whatever and was like, Hey, like I brought my Xbox or mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to like, if anybody wants to come and game. And I remember some people criticizing and being like, what are they doing? Like they're missing the whole point of the event, like to get yeah. together and socialize with other people. And I think I at first took it from a point of like, not insult, but like, Oh, like what we're doing isn't like appealing to you. Right. And yet you're here at the event. Mm -hmm. So, like, I took it sort of a little bit, I guess, I internalized it as, like, a challenge of, like, well, what is it that I need to do to get them to integrate or to be social or, like, to enjoy right. the event? And, you know, I've shifted over time, and I've realized now, like, like, what do I care? Like, if you just want to come to the event and you want to spend money on a hotel that room that you never really leave, um, I'll care a little bit if I'm spending – if I'm planning on you eating and drinking and I'm putting out money for that and your ass doesn't show up, like that will start to agitate me because I'll be like, I don't have to do that. Like if you tell mm -hmm. me you mm -hmm. don't want meals, like we can figure out how to make that work <laughs> and I have to spend yeah, less money. Right. Like yeah. but that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I, I mean I, I think there's a, a, a balance to these things. But yeah. Um, so I do want to ask this question and I don't know how uh, there, it's um, that important. Um, so over the time of the bear community, we went from bears to bears and cubs, and then we have otters, we have wolves, and then, um, the whole furry community has come about. We have the pup community for like on the kink side. So I'm just kind of asking a generalized question. Do we think in the next 30 to 40 years, there will be more animals or like, definitions because i remember when i joined the bear community like i don't remember people saying things like daddy bear or polar bear um and i just feel like that, that that's manifested over time um and so i just don't know like if in another 30 40 years any of that will still exist or if it'll expand mm. even further or not I, I i think there will be and i think this is just part of society in general Okay. Is where we will grow and change. And the thing that the bear community needs to do is make sure they're willing to grow and change. Uh, like five, ten years ago, would we have even thought about the idea of trans bears? Hmm. I mean, we point. have the we have the T in LGBT, but did the bear community think about that? And nowadays, it, they them's non bear. Uh, we got nine bi binaries, trans people, right? Totally welcome in a majority, and we have have them even winning bear contests. Well, and that's an interesting point that you make, Jeff, about like the the evolution of the community, because I agree with you, like in the early years of the event, um, I don't know if anyone trans came to, to my event. I kind of don't care. I mean, it, there's a curiosity part to it, but I don't remember anyone really saying anything to me specifically about it. I remember being at a different event and someone walking up and talking to me about how like this one person that was kind of like drawing a lot of people's eyes, they were like, Hey, do you know that they're trans? Which I thought was like pretty douchey. Cause I was like, what the fuck? Like, like it's important, but not important. Um, it's important if you're going to do things specifically with them, like, and you know, share some intimate physical space, but that's to be between you and them to be right. to discussed and found out later. So yeah, like I agree, like over time I've seen, that there's been progress made. It it mm -hmm. probably was not at the speed that people wanted it to be. I no. guarantee there, you know, are BIPOC 
individuals. There are trans individuals like that, that really wanted our community to get with it much quicker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I, I'm not making an excuse. I just want to state, I personally feel like you can't rush people's comfort. Like you can push it on them, but they usually become resistant. Yeah, and so, I'm not I'm not saying that it's something that will happen overnight or anything. No, no, no. Right. But, right. Um, but it's gonna happen. And people need to work on accepting that before it happens so that everything can be used with the transition. Right. It will it's just gonna be better for the community to yeah. to to be in that headspace. Mm-hmm. Uh it it will take time and sometimes it's just transitions like uh recently i started a new uh, D campaign and i ended up realizing uh doing a random character and i'm like oh this 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 character i generated okay what what is this oh you know what they seem very androgynous maybe they're non-binary and then i realized that Recently, I typed up my backstory for my DM, and I started off saying they, 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 and then I go on to say he, and I'm like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. And it's part of that that type of transition that's going to happen. Right. That, right. That, and and I think you're speaking to the learning curve that we all face, like in developing our own way of looking at things. Um, you know, I, I own that in my past, there were times where I didn't know anyone who was a person of color. I didn't know anyone that was trans. Um, I mean, to be fair, I also theoretically didn't know anyone that was gay or lesbian or bi. Um, (laughs) so like all of that, I think comes with time and you find for yourself how to incorporate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The events are evolving, um, in a sense, I will say, and that's, I think, for the better. As I mentioned earlier, inclusivity is becoming a major factor um, in regards to events. Um, Female-identified bodies are being represented in our communities. Um, You all weren't at NAB, but World Bear Weekend is officially making all of their titles genderless. So... There will you whoever wants to run for a title is allowed to run for a title, which I think is kind of a really really big progressive movement forward. Um, and there are other things that are being put into place that make this inclusivity become more part of it, the community as itself. Um, in regards to animals. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be any other names. <laughs> like we, we've got a whole fucking zoo and I don't think there's going to be things. Um, with, I think with the onset of like pets and critters, um, that community, mm-hmm. um, the idea of animals may fall to that. I, I, I you think know? the, the, the mm. types of animals will, will kind of start slowing down because there's only so many. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, well, well, one thing is is also realizing <laughs> this is going into identity. Like, mm-hmm. I, I am forty three years old, and I identify as a cub. I've got a gray beard. Everything. It's like, right. oh, you are a bear, or maybe because I happen to be the skinnier of the three of us, I might be considered an otter. And I'm like, no, I am a cub. That is how I identify. Mm-hmm. This is this is my bare identity. Bare identity. So I find that interesting because what I realized is like there's a difference between like identity label and like personification. Mm-hmm. And the reason I make that distinction is because I was just thinking about how like the furry community um personifies like they have their first sona like they have this um developed representation of themselves and they have various ways of showing that and i think like parallel to that is like the critter community um and so 
I'm wondering if actually the concept of like these animal identities will lessen because of these other options mm -hmm. that we won't find it within the bear community. So important to be like, you know, I'm in, you know, uh, an Asian, you know, like, you know, panda bear or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, like I'm struggling at what I'm trying to say, but the, you know, like, like the reason I giggled a moment ago is because we were talking about stuff. And for some reason I had this amid, I had this wild imagination that someone was like, you know, like I'm an incognito praying mantis, bitch. Like, you know, <laughs> it'd be like, okay, girl. Like, I mean, that's, it that's happened. how you identify. It's just, it, it, again, <laughs> I think that's sort of part of it. Um, and one of the things that I saw and heard more often, especially during and after NAB, was um, our community, for the most part, has been the most welcoming. And I put that in like quotation marks because I'm kind of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we know, and we've all experienced that sometimes it's not been <laughs> that at all. Um, well, and I want to, okay, so I want to say this, because we've kind of touched on this in the past over the history of the podcast. Here's the thing. I feel like the welcoming is based on the people, not on the whole community. Right. Because there are definitively places and spaces that I've been in where I've, like, gotten the vibe that it's a close rank file, like there's mm -hmm. a barrier type thing. Like, right. if you're not part of us... And I'm not saying it's mean girls, but it's this thing where like you're not really accepted and it's palpable. Like like mm -hmm. there's a thing about it. And then I've been in other spaces where like like baby, they don't give no toots about nothing about you know what I mean? It's like, hey, you're a person, you know, you're welcome here. Um right. you know, want a burrito? Uh <laughs> I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like they're just very kind of, you know, everybody's um welcoming and it doesn't there's no real specifics about like that and i and i think i've been hopeful i'll be honest since i haven't been to events in recent years that those barriers are breaking down um mm -hmm. and the popularity the a bears so to speak mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call them like that's sort of diminished um maybe the pandemic kind of shifted things and made people realize like listen you're being an elitist fuck go to hell or whatever, you know, that, that people are more open to just speaking their mind and saying shit like that to people. I don't know. Yeah. I think, and, and that's, I think that there has been a shift for that. I think, um, at some events, don't, we're not going to coach, you know, gloss over all, all the things, but like, I think, um, some events have started to become more inclusive. Some have not. Um, some I have found have specifically indicated that you have to be male identified on your license in order to attend the event. Like that's mm. kind of shitty, you know? Um, so again, there are things out there that there are events out there that are still need to like, I would say, get with the times. Um, I think that there is a strong desire from the community to stop with the A-listing and the perfect bears and what have you and move towards just being as open and free a community as it, as it can be. Um, as, but as Jeff kind of mentioned, that's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some work and there have to be people willing to put in that work to make it happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's fair. That's where that's why I'm curious about what the future of things will look like, you know, and who knows, maybe in the next 30 to 40 years, we don't see much of the bear community as an identity because things have become so equitable that, you know, all spaces are, are welcome in some fashion. It's not mm -hmm. that big of a distinction. Um, I don't know if that's how likely that is, but uh, it's an, op an option, I guess. And then the last thing I was kind of curious about um, is our... What about the aging <clears throat> of this community? And by that, I mean, like, it was kind of a running joke, like, in the years I was putting on DF before about, like, every room had to have enough electrical outlets. And, I mean, and that was just for the CPAPs. So, like, 
And that's sort of been a thing. It's funny because um, I know that a couple of us in the organizing talked about, but never like decided to move forward with the concept of like having a panel where we talked about the health of our members to discuss like diabetes, heart disease. Um, I mean, we did do a little bit of stuff about HIV prep, like an STI type stuff. I mean, that's kind of a given. Um, because we know our community, uh, but I mean, it was this discussion, you know, and, and so as we're aging, I've kind of been wondering, like, to my point earlier, like you have more income, like, do you, you know, make it a big vacation thing? And like, so like, do you not necessarily go to as many events? I don't know. I guess maybe I'm asking the question, do we think there's a, a possible future for an older bears event? Um, yeah, I saw that head cock, David. Um, <laughs> Because I think that there would be, there would be, there would be some interest in different ways. I think there would be people who are like into older individuals who would be interested in going to like a, a Silver Bears event, we'll call it. Um, and then we've also got, you know, uh, maybe we'll call it Silver Fur. I don't know. I, I got to work on that. Um, <laughs> this is not the place to workshop. So, <laughs> but the thing is, I'm thinking about this. I'm like. Like, you know, does it need to be a hotel that's only one floor without stairs? Uh, <laughs> I'm being serious. Like, because your knees and hips go, you know, like, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Like, I'm just I'm just saying, like, is that do we think that'll be a thing or is that not really going to be a thing? Because of like my earlier comment that individuals will like be a little bit more selective about their stuff and maybe feel that they don't have to go to these events because I, yeah i i don't think the community is large enough to have such event not saying i mean uh, i i'm looking at it from maybe, a historical maybe it's perspective. more of a gonna be a mini event maybe it's one of those maybe it's like the exposures where you have events like smaller events throughout the United States or something. Or well, I mean, world. I guess I'm, you could even expand it beyond that. Well, I'm looking at like, if people came into this community 20 to 30 years ago and they were in their twenties or thirties, like they're all like in their late forties, fifties, sixties. So there's a part of me that's like, is that, you know, is that, is that a thing? Silver um, bear or Orlando? Silver Bear, uh, uh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Yeah, I knew Palm Springs was going to come up. I just knew that like that was going to be mentioned. Um, I. Uh... But but you also have to have like like Silver Bear Montreal. Well, and I but uh, yes and no. The reason Silver why Bear I say, London. It... I don't know about the northern climates. I have a I have a funny feeling that they're gonna want it to be warm because as you get older, oh, you get cold easier. I would love to get, to attend Silver Bear Kyoto. Wow, I think that Kyoto would probably be better than Tokyo, wow. or, or you know, some somewhere that's not the the major metropolitan Japan. <laughs> See, and I thought he was going to say, I would love to attend Silver Bear Austin. But that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> It'd be like, oh, well, my own backyard. The thing is, I would, I would, I would love to, to attend to see uh, Silver Asian Bears. So. Uh, <sighs> anyway. Um... <laughs> that, that's the reason why I said that. But yeah, Silver Bear Austin would pro probably be okay. The only thing is I can't really think of a venue here, so it would probably have to be like Dallas or Houston. Right. So San Antonio. I don't San Antonio know. might be better because that's only an hour and a half away versus three hours. You never know. There might be like a, a senior community area complex that has like rentable, like, you know, condos and and cabanas anyway anyways. i mean uh, wow. like, like are, silver wow. silver bear hawaii <laughs> which have like cabanas or something like that oh, no. <laughs> i'm not sure if we're about to break david or what <laughs> I'm having like, silver bear cruises so many thoughts that's a thought like that i could see being a thing but so many bellies <sighs> on the on the lido deck 
anyways. Yeah. But the I I I <laughs> y'all um, this idea I think is it something that would could potentially happen? Maybe, maybe as our community has a is aging Look, and is, continues to age. This is Creative Commons ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm putting this out here in the world. I just asked for for attribution. Attribution oh in the form of a free, like, you know, uh, event pass, free hotel room. Well, even even if it's something, like, inspired by, by Cubs Out Loud. Oh, okay. You're, you're <laughs> letting a lot of that go. I was expecting, I was, I was like, shoot for the moon. Shoot be like, I would like, I would like a free pass and a hotel room. I'll take care of my own transportation um, and a belly or a butt in my face all weekend. So, yeah. well, yes. <laughs> That too. I'm just not reaching for 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 the sky. I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying uh, here's the base level. This okay, is your tribute. Got it. Got it. And then this... you know full ride paid. So, uh, Goody Two Toad said in the live chat, it sounds like you're describing uh, Method for me, a convention called a Gray Muzzle Con by a lot of people. Yes, oh. just not specifically furry. No, no, no. Yeah. But like, I find that interesting. Like, yeah. I was like, I didn't realize. I mean, I've heard of Method for Meat. I didn't realize that there was a sub, like, uh, kind of reference that it's called a gray muzzle con. Because I, well, I think, because again, and that sort of thing, I could see being a, a thing. Like, though, that's kind of where I was going to go to it. Um, our community will age, will age, and continue to age. They may still go to the events, and then certain events may become more, like. That's where all the old bears go. And that sounds really <laughs> bad and negative, but what I mean is like that's you know that's the event for the old bears or what have you. That's where the, the daddy bear dick is. The daddy, yeah. If you want your daddy dick, you, you go to there. <laughs> like there's gonna be plenty. And you know, larger event like NAB, for example, you could definitely see a range of ages in all the people that were there. Um, sometimes the issue becomes who is running the event. If it's a bunch of older mm. bear types that are running the event, like sometimes that's going to be what draws people. Um, for good and bad, I will say. Like sometimes like there could be some very close-minded converse thoughts about bears and what they are because of age, and mm. that could potentially be problematic. Um well, to your point that you're making, Damon, I find it interesting because there's a part of me that's like, that's true of any event. Yeah. Like, if you have if you have an event that's put on by very young individuals, then like their purview, their concept of event planning is specific to their experiences. So, on the other end of it, like you were saying, if you have a, a like an older group of individuals that are doing the planning um, and the organizing the event, then like they bring all of their life experience to that, um, and. I mean, I'll own it. Any event plan that is being put together by it's one person or multiple people, like they focus on what they want to focus on. Mm -hmm. So like some people want to have gaming. Some people want to like, you know, have a playroom. Some people like, you know, just want to have social stuff. Some people want to go get drunk. Yeah. Um, you know, some people just want to fuck. So, I mean, like, you know, that's, <laughs> that's going to be what is brought to the table. Basically it'd be a part of that plan. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I, th I think in my experience, what I received as feedback that people appreciated about the event that I put on or events, technically plural, um, is that people liked that it was low key. Like we were well aware of that things happened, but we didn't like make a big deal of it. Right. So like we had a play space, but. We didn't make a big deal of it. And we knew that people were doing stuff in the room, but we didn't quite make a big deal of it. And my philosophy was like, don't don't make it my business to know your business. Mm. So like if you're going to have an orgy in your room, don't break the fucking furniture. Like because because then like I have to be told as the person in charge of the event and you're going to get a bill, bitch, because you got to pay for that shit. Right. Uh, <laughs> so like that's how I that's how I feel about. These events is like, you know, how, how you handle that is, is something that can be appreciated. Yeah. So to your point, David, I think it would be interesting to see if like, especially at the larger events that there are these like kind of subgroupings mm -hmm. that 
do stuff and maybe someone from that you know grouping is like approaches like you know the people at wbw world bear weekend or or at um you know uh, north american bear weekend or ibr or whatever um and say to the event you know organizers like hey there's kind of this thing you might not know about it and we would really like to you know do a um a cigar and pipe smoke social for uh you know older members of the community and their you know um i don't know what appreciators what i don't know what to say <laughs> admirers thank you thank thank you for the save <laughs> I was like, blah, 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 blah. like it wasn't come up with anything. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. but you know, and then maybe they would be receptive to that. I think, I think if you're flexible with your event planning for those kind of unknown or newer things that come forward, right. um, my perspective has been like, do we have the space? Can we handle that? And more importantly, who's going to take care of it? Right. So like, I will say this to people. If you're an idea generator, but you don't have the bandwidth or the ability to do the thing, don't necessarily be surprised if you come forward with something and then it doesn't happen because they can't do it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a person who's willing to put in the time and the effort, like you were saying, Damon, and like approaches someone and is like, I'm willing to organize this and do this thing. Like, I just need you to give me a space. Yeah. And like, I will if there's a budget, I'll figure that out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and, and handle that stuff. I think events are a little more open to that. Cause they're like, Oh, is that le something less I have to do? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I, and I agree. I think if going to the kind of aging thing, um, you know, people are going to have to start realizing, you know, especially larger events that it's going to be harder to get around. So maybe focusing events in one area or having people have the option to place their rooms closer to, say, the elevators or um, uh, having events that aren't clear across, you know, one event that's over here and one event that's all the way on the mm. other side, those kind of things. Like keeping those ideas in mind to make sure that it central is locations. equitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, central locations are just... Um, giving people a little bit more time to get from one point to another. Um, right. Like, like I, I know what Damon's speaking to. Like if you have a very large footprint for an event, mm -hmm. like think about the spatial relationship between the activities and your attendees and how you get from one place to another. Like if you can, if at all possible, keep them kind of contained to the same region or like if you, if you have to move things around, like maybe the A block is way over here and the B block tor is towards the middle and the C block is towards the other end. So people kind of travel or herd, mm -hmm. yeah. so to speak, from a location to a location as opposed to like ping ponging back mm -hmm. and forth or all over the place like a pentagram. And then, you know, they're exhausted after five events and like, you know, then they don't go to anything else or whatever. Well, yeah. And the other look at that is bigger is not always or meeting limit i know some people would be like oh we want to have a whole bunch of different things because but then you have the problem of this panel's happening the same time as this panel and i want to see right. both of them yeah um, right and and then it's then it's the choice paralyzation you know. Well, and I mean, and that happened even I know for our event, people kind of wanted us to get bigger. Um, we averaged close to 200 and people wanted us to be bigger. They wanted us to like be like some of the other events. And I, the committee, we just weren't, weren't comfortable with that. There's only a handful of us that were putting on the event. We didn't have more people stepping up and like, you know, willing mm -hmm. to expand it. Plus, we also didn't have the facility. We didn't have the like the square footage. Um, well, the only place like that it's could people. Well, we we. The only place that could take more people was technically the water park because it can hold thousands. So like that was that was it. Like, you know, and we didn't feel comfortable about the idea of having multiple facilities to try to do things in. I mean, we had a main hotel, host hotel. We had an overflow. But the overflow was just a couple blocks away. Like it was technically walking distance. It was like a mile, a um, mm. mile and a quarter. So like if you mm. if you needed to walk, you could uh, mm. wasn't ideal, but. So it was one of those things that, like, you know, that's a possibility. I hear you, Damon. Um, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we also had shuttle service where you could like drive, get a ride, like, you know, stick your leg out. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, I, I think those are all the things that you have to, to kind of take into consideration. Cause to your point, Jeff, like getting bigger doesn't necessarily make it better. Yeah. It just means more people, more bodies, more things to manage. Yeah. And yes, it, it increases everything else, more butts, more bellies, more beards, more whatever. Um, but, but it also makes it harder to please everybody mm-hmm. and have like, and don't the thi- I know it. <laughs> that was a uh, visual gag for the audio oh. listeners they have no idea what just happened anyways the the <laughs> idea being like one of the issues i will say that happened with um nab was that they had a lot going on mm-hmm. but it was like on top of each other so you had like mm. three or four <laughs> gary <laughs> <laughs> sorry I think they call that several... a chain. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you know the old adage? Gay men, they're like Legos. They stack very easily. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, we derailed. Yeah, David's like, God damn it. Going, several <laughs> events going on with several like, classes or what have you going on at the same time, and you having to pick and choose. Um, right. And usually... In a way, several things that one person might be interested in going to multiple, and that could be a problem. But you go on what you get. You get what you get. And that right. Sounds, I mean, yeah. I think I think in parallel to this, like my experience was like Claw, um, the Cleveland mm-hmm. Leather Annual Event Weekend, um, because it has a it's it's very education focused. So there's a lot of tracks. Quote unquote, mm-hmm. all these different like opportunities and what i realized is like sometimes in your planning it might be helpful to be like okay so we're going to do a track about x and we're not going to have the events overlap on time they're going to be spaced out but if like you're interested in this one thing like you can actually attend all of them if you go on this day at this time and then this time and then this other day at this time and this time you know what i mean but if you don't want to do that you can kind of move around um but that, but that Staggered. takes strategy, like logistics to look at it from a higher viewpoint and think about the different like mixes and mechanisms of the things. And even the best planning in the world, to Jeff's point, you're still not going to be able to make everybody happy and overcome that they have more than one thing at the same time and they're just going to have to pick one, you know? Yeah. It, 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 one thing that might be helpful would actually just to have multiple smaller events mm. maybe even at different locations yeah so and as a and the, the own there's here's a couple of couple of examples in our community western eastern exposure and they think they've got a couple of other events around the country where you get the west coasters to come and maybe you have similar if not the same content over in the east coast and to the midwest and then the south etc and kind of spreading that out different times of the year i mean welcome to everybody but so that people can go on their schedule you go to one of the events but you don't go to any of the others that's okay because you pretty much get a similar experience depending on your location and even in the uh rest of the world like pax the penny arcade expo has ones all around the country pax east pass west pass south pax australia People can go to a PAX. They don't have to go to all of them. There may be slightly different content between some of it. Maybe they even stream some of the content, which would also provide something for accessibility for some events. Panels and contests live streamed. And then you put it on like some sort of pay channel or uh, even on on a platform where people see it free with ads and they subscribe to the channel, that sort of thing. That may be something. I don't know. Just throwing mm-hmm. it out there. And, yeah, and I, I think I think one thing that that's 
that that in this evolution for for bear events which i think this entire thing has kind of turned into one thing to help lessen the fading awayness because i really feel like eventually there's going to be so few bear events because nobody's wanting to not as many of the younger bears are going to want to go out and run these things as soon as people start aging out that providing some online portion to it or an online version of the event could also add in to do something. I don't know the logistics, probably a little more difficult. Get those zoomers, those millennials on board <laughs> to help help figure that out because I can guarantee you they will help. They can help figure it out and who knows, they might be super excited to do that. <laughs> Just think of it, the 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 World Bear, World Bear, uh, onlyfans.com slash uh, uh, World Bear Weekend. <laughs> Might have to go to that. Or so for, for some of the SFW panels, panels or, or, or things, maybe they can put it on Twitch or YouTube. Curate the content. Yeah, I've kind of wondered a little bit why events haven't gone more to streaming. I think I think the logistics of it are the challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There there is a thing in the productions. I mean and even if the if events start off with relatively simple streams where it's like one camera pointed at at the thing. And then maybe the audio is hooked up to the sound system or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's something I kind of toyed with years ago, thinking up, but like it just wasn't something I could manifest or put more time and energy into. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyways, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Yeah, I think that's the sound. That's a lot. <laughs> Uh, before we go, I do want to announce something, and I'm going to do a quick, quick uh, share of the screen here to to our our co-hosts. Where is it? It's not the window I want. Oh, there it is. So YouTube has this podcast tab on the page. And okay. currently we we have our 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 Cubs Out Loud and Sue Will Drag Race uh video episodes up on there. Well just recently they allowed us to take our RS audio only RSS feed, pop it into YouTube, and it will make static image videos of those. Huh. So to interpret that, what that means is it'll take the video show no. and automatically turn it into an audio. No, no. it will okay. take our audio only podcast feed. Okay. Take the audio files that are on there. Okay. And create a static image, which is just the Cubs Out Loud logo. Okay. So oh. people can listen to it through the YouTube app or wherever. As a podcast. So it's essentially like a it's not a video. It but it, it's essentially an image with the audio of the um podcast playing. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm just gonna say this and I because I have an opinion about this now. So the concept is they're gonna import our audio feed to make an audio podcast on a video based platform. See, this is, okay. this is what so the page looks it. like. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I've known for a while that people only listen to some YouTube stuff. And I'm like, 
what you're missing the point it's a video like there's visuals so this will i'll be interested to see how this works for them i mean I, and i appreciate that it's a new thing for us but i'm like mm, okay yeah the, the youtube interface on a on a podcast or, or an audio podcast is a little bit different mm. than sounds for, good for youtube video so I just published that, so it's it's available now for for people. Not sure how it's going to work. It's an experiment. It, I only have the main show on here for now, just seeing how it goes. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to announce that before saying, plenty ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail at 361 seal talk That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various pl- uh, platforms such as uh, Twitter slash X, YouTube, uh, Facebook, at Cubs All Out, the appropriate place the URL. I don't have my page up. There it is. You can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. That's in the telegram platform if you haven't figured that out. You can see when we're planning or recording these shows by going to bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar there. Get various uh, merchandise on our merch store at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud, such as our next generation shirt. That's just my foreplay. Just the logo. Various other things. Hats. Hats. Mugs. Shoes. Both for a seal and unsealable drug race. Some of the designs were designed by Smash. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smash. the bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Find us on various podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's Box at Box Puppy, Box Cup, Box Up there or other, where occasionally I repost somebody else's stuff. I repost it. I don't like take it, take the content and post it on there. I just repost it so they're attributed. Talk. Yeah. Or Damon. <laughs> it's okay I wasn't here last week um, if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theatercub79 that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook on um, for not safe for work stuff you can find me at pup underscore umber on Twitter or pup umber 79 on blue sky for the safe for work stuff you can find me as DMA gamer 79 on Twitter or TikTok Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere on Gary online. <laughs> anywhere online is Gary 73. And uh, another announcement. This is the last time for who knows how long. Say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, it's afternoon. Have a good one. Bye.